reunion with source. Proof. I wish to speak concerning the desire for proof. You will only see what you want to see, hear what you want to hear, and accept what you want to accept. You and only you authorize what is to be your reality. The universe unfolds according to your picture of reality. Those whose minds are closed or who are extremely skeptical do not want proof. What they desire is to remain in their present reality. And as God's favorite words are, as you wish, there they stay. Their world is a reflection of a closed and skeptical mind, which is manifesting and validating their truth. Another point concerning truth is that if a truth needs defending, you don't own it. If you are in need of acceptance from others, you have given away your power. Only a limited God needs defending. Cast your pearls only before those who will appreciate them. And if you are of a different truth, allow them. This can be best illustrated by a story. A small-minded professor once came to a great master. He was very close to any reality other than that which could be measured or experienced by the five senses. He demanded that the master read his mind to prove to him his spiritual abilities. The master smiled and pulled a small, straight pin from his robe. He asked the professor to first read the inscription upon the head of the pin. The professor stared and stared. He took his glasses off and cleaned them, then once again stared intently upon the head of the pin. After a few minutes, the professor said, I know something is there, but I can't read it. It's just too small. The master replied, That is also my problem. The professor, oblivious, to the correlation between the small pin and his small mind, asked, Can I take it home with me and use a magnifying glass on it? The master replied, I am the magnifying glass you seek. This again puzzled the professor. The, pro the master plucked the pin from his hand, stared at it, and read the following inscription. The universe cannot be held on the head of a pin. The professor, again, missing the wisdom in the words of the inscription, accused the master of already knowing the inscription or making it up. The master replied, I had foreknowledge of the inscription. A great master gave me the pin and asked me to read the inscription. I spent days in contemplation until it was finally revealed to me. I told the great master the inscription, and he smiled and nodded his head in agreement. The professor replied, So you have never used a microscope or magnifying glass to prove it to yourself? The master replied, I told you before, I am the magnifying glass, and I have seen the inscription, not with my physical eyes, but with my inner vision. It is all the proof needed. I need. You, dear brother, shall never know what is on the head of the pin, for you have not learned to trust your own feelings and knowing this. You have gained your understanding through recycled ignorance and that which can be stuffed into a test tube or measured by a physical apparatus. A fact is nothing more than a theory that enough people have agreed upon. Even imagination is a fact related relative to the plane upon which it resides. All things begin as an idea or thought, and as we evolve in consciousness, truth evolves and facts change. As for reading your mind, I will tell you this, you will waste a great portion of your future 
through wondering what was on the head of the pin. The universe is only as infinite as the mind that can perceive it. If you say it is so, it is so to you. Truly, as you believe, so it is. I cannot read your mind until you open it. The master stuck the pin in his robe and joyously went his way. For in this place, the father cannot do any great things because they lack the faith. Quoted by Jesus.